Hi, my name is Vikas Maturi, and my project focused on engineering the intraocular injection guide to reduce pain in ophthalmic disease treatment. In the United States, approximately 4.7 million intraocular injections are provided annually, with nearly 30 million more being provided worldwide. These injections are used in the treatment of a variety of debilitating eye diseases, including neovascular age-related macular degeneration, or wet AMD, as well as diabetic macular edema, or DME, which combined affect a total of 3 million Americans and are the leading causes of blindness in the United States. Specifically in these conditions, there is a leakage of fluid and blood from faulty blood vessels located in or underneath the retina. Thus, anti-VEGF, or anti-vascular endothelial growth factor drugs, are injected into the eye via intraocular injections to prevent the further leakage of these faulty blood vessels. Currently, there are a variety of different anti-VEGF drugs used in the worldwide marketplace, each of which is provided with its own distinctive needle and syringe type and size. During the traditional injection procedure, a lid speculum is used to temporarily separate the eyelids. This allows the physician to provide the injection in the white or sclera of the eye around here, while preventing the eyelids and eyelashes from touching the injection site, which is important because they often carry dangerous and pathogenous bacteria that cannot touch either of those locations. Now, there is a huge problem with this traditional injection procedure. Patients often complain of intense pain due to the pressure of the speculum, often more so than the pain of the injection itself. In addition, repeated use of this eyelid speculum has been shown to cause permanent functional eyelid damage, such as ptosis or drooping eyelids. Thus, the purpose of my project was to develop a novel device that eliminated the need for the speculum during intraocular injection procedures, but still providing safety and greater patient comfort during these injections. Now, before coming up with some sort of original idea, I first had to establish a set of key design constraints for which my device needed to meet. This primarily included ensuring that injections were given exactly three to five millimeters away from the corneal limbus or edge, as well as ensuring that the injections were occurring perpendicular to the scleral surface, both of which are extremely important to ensure that no vital eye structures such as the lens or retina are hit during the injection. Existing devices have been created in an attempt to remedy this problem. However, all of them fail to meet at least one of these four major design criteria. For example, this patented device does not conform to the eye's curvature, thus potentially allowing an eyelid to touch the injection site or injection needle, and encourages injections to occur at non-perpendicular angles. Now, while coming up with this original idea, I was actually able to observe several different physicians providing intraocular injections 40, 50, 60 times a day. And what would happen was that patients were continuing to experience this pain from the speculum. I thought that I could actually reconceptualize the whole intraocular injection process. Instead of having a speculum, I thought that a physician could utilize a tube and place that tube directly on the eye. This would allow them to provide the injection through the tube while forcing the eyelids and eyelashes to move up and along the sides of the device. This still prevents the eyelids and eyelashes from touching the injection site or injection needle, but still eliminates the previous, previous pressure from the speculum prying them apart and, and instead allows them to move freely up and along the sides of the tube. In addition, this device could be aligned with the side of the corneal limbus or edge, thus ensuring injections were occurring the correct distance from the corneal edge as well. This prototype, as well as all future prototypes, were designed using, using Autodesk Inventor CAD software and were repeatedly 3D printed and tested on model eyes to better understand for me what modifications needed to be made to the device throughout the design process. In stage two, I wanted to improve the basic function of the device and did this primarily by one, increasing the tapered structure as well as the height of the device for greater physician stability and grip. In addition, I had changed the curvature on the bottom of the device to better match the curvature of the eye to prevent eyelids or eyelashes from getting under the device and touching the injection site. In stage three, I wanted to ensure that the device met all of the major design criteria. This primarily for me included making huge internal structural modifications, such as increasing the internal taper primarily near the bottom of the device to allow and accommodate all different types of needles and syringes that are used to deliver the variety of anti-VEGF drugs. 
In addition, I again changed the curvature on the bottom of the device so that injections were forced to occur at perpendicular angles instead of at a 45 degree angle as was in stage two. In stage four, I engaged in feedback driven modification. I talked to a variety of physicians that gave intraocular injections on a weekly or even daily basis. And they encouraged me to make modifications that ensured that no needle or eye could touch anything that was rough. And thus, I changed the internal surface and internal uh, structure of the device to remove any ledges so that the needle could not be caught when the needle was being placed through the device, as well as smoothing the entire bottom surface of the device so that there was a limited risk for any scleral or corneal scratching when the device was placed on the eye. Finally, in stage five, I made some final modifications to the device that primarily included widening these flanges located on either side of the device that one, provide greater stability when the device is placed on the eye, and two, better guide the eyelids up and along the sides of the device instead of potentially allowing them to get under the device. Now, as you can see in these pictures, this is me utilizing a 3D printed prototype of the IIG on a Model I to again better understand what modifications needed to be made to the device throughout the design process. Now, while this full engineering process was extremely rewarding, I still wanted to see if my final design, the IIG-1, actually met its original goal of reducing pain during intraocular injections. Thus, I helped design a clinical trial that tested this new IIG device against traditional methods. I utilized 50 subjects that were to see bilateral intraocular injections, or injections in both eyes on the same day. In one eye, I had a trained medical physician use the standard eyelid speculum, and in the other, I had them use the new IIG device. Treatment order of the IIG or speculum first, as well as the usage of the IIG in the right or left eye, was determined by a randomization schedule. In order to measure pain, I had subjects mark their level of discomfort utilizing a visual analog scale. Essentially, a patient draws a line where they think best represents their pain from either device. Then the measurement from zero to that mark in millimeters represents their pain score on a scale of zero to 100. In regard to material, after consulting with the biotechnology firm, I settled on using the Somos Watershed XC11122, a low viscosity liquid to polymer thermoplastic that was capable of primarily the extremely precise molding necessary to match the fine, finely detailed device uh, and design of the IIG. In addition, this material is, material is highly water resistant, allowing it to travel with the motion of the eye when it's, once it's placed on the eye. The results of the clinical trials were as follows. I first found that there was no intrapatient correlation of speculum and IIG1 pain scores. As shown by this scatter plot with an R squared value of only 0 0.000068, the minimal intrapatient correlation suggests that any given patient that has a high speculum pain score is no more likely to have a high IIG pain score. In addition, I found that patients experienced significantly less pain with the IIG1 than they did with the speculum. As you can see in these bar graphs, the speculum has a mean pain score of 32.22 millimeters, while the IIG has a mean pain score of only 14.76 millimeters. In addition, 95% confidence intervals constructed for both the speculum and IIG1 pain scores did not overlap, again suggesting that there's a significant decrease in pain when using the IIG device. These results were confirmed by a paired samples t-test with a mean difference of 17.46 that corresponded to a p-value of 0 0.00043. This value is less than the pre-specified alpha of 0 0.01, again suggesting that the IIG significantly reduced pain in comparison to the speculum. Now, while this first clinical trial was a great success, I received feedback from physicians during that first clinical trial that noted that they would prefer to have a slot located on either side of the device to better allow them to see exactly where the needle was entering the eye. Thus, I made this modification to the IIG, creating the IIG2, and repeated the clinical trial. All methodology was repeated from the first clinical trial, except that only 43 returning subjects from that first clinical trial were used in the second. The results were very similar to the first clinical trial. I again found that there was minimal or no interpatient correlation of speculum and IIG2 pain scores, as demonstrated by this graph with an R squared value of only 0 0.01205. In addition, I found that patients again experienced significantly less pain with the IIG2 than they did with the speculum, 
as demonstrated by this IIG2 mean pain score of only 9.94 and non-overlapping confidence intervals. These results were again confirmed by a paired samples t-test with a p-value of 0 0.00025. Thus, these clinical trials demonstrate that the novel IIG device significantly reduces pain traditionally experienced during intraocular injections. Demo it has been demonstrated that decreased pain can lead to better patient acceptance and compliance with treatment plans. This is especially true for treatment plans that are associated with AMD and DME that require often monthly injections for months or even years at a time. In addition, the IIG2 can be manufactured on a large scale more cheaply than the traditional eyelid speculum. Utilizing an injection molding process followed by ethylene oxide gas sterilization, this device can be manufactured and distributed cheaply to physicians worldwide in the treatment of these injections. Thus, in conclusion, the intraocular injection guide, the novel intraocular injection guide, has been shown to significantly reduce pain traditionally experienced during intraocular injections and in the treatment of debilitating eye diseases. Thus, it can be effectively and cheaply implemented for future use by physicians worldwide. I'd like to thank the, my mentor, my friends, and my family for supporting me throughout this journey, as well as the Siemens Foundation, Siemens Competition Team, Discovery Education, and the George Washington University for, for providing this amazing experience to me as well as all of my fellow finalists. Thank you.